Alright mates, howdy doody. In today's video, we're doing the Draenei starting experience. Starting off in Ammon Vale, and then moving on to Azamist Isle. So let's go! One month ago, a terrible explosion tore open the skies above northern Kalimdor. At that moment, the great ship Exodar plummeted from the heavens and crashed upon the world of Azeroth. Having fled the ravaged world of Outland, the noble Draenei used the dimension traveling Exodar to reach safe haven. Inspired by tales of the heroic alliance that stood against the might of the Burning Legion, the Draenei have come to enlist aid in retaking their shattered homeland. Dedicated to preserving life and upholding the tenets of the Holy Light, the Draenei hope to gather a new coalition of warriors to battle the Burning Legion and put a halt to its horrific Burning Crusade. Armed only with courage and their unshakable faith in the light, the Draenei look forward to finding the Alliance and ushering them towards the destiny that awaits beyond the skies of Azeroth. Now, the fate of two worlds rests in your hand. Did some research again. Some of the older folks may remember that Blizzard retconned the Draenei story, or should I say the Eridar story? According to the Warcraft 3 instruction manual, Eridar were basically running around invading and enslaving worlds and being dicks. Sargeras defeated them pretty easily and imprisoned them, but he was deeply affected by just how nasty these bastards were. So ultimately, the Eridar played a big part in his downfall. However, Blizzard wanted to introduce a new alliance race, so they changed the story and decided, well maybe some of the Eridar were nice, and the community absolutely lost their shit prompting Chris Metzen to actually write a full-blown response where he basically just said, yeah, I wrote that manual like four years ago, and then I forgot. Sosmates. Another interesting fact, if you're into this kind of thing, whilst developing the Draenei poses and animations, a big influence was Alex Ross's renditions of Superman, because the Draenei were always intended to be a fairly noble and heroic race. I know that's going to really annoy some people. Not everyone likes the Draenei, but what ifs? I'm just stating facts. Anyway, our hero today shall be called the... Uh, Bajangles, because you can't keep expecting me to come up with a brilliant name every week. Bajangles' adventure began in an area called Ammon Vale, which is located within Azimist Isle. There's really not a lot to this small area lore-wise, it's just one of the crash sites of the Exodar. Unfortunately, the ship kind of broke up in the atmosphere, so there's bits of Exodar scattered across the region. And what the Draenei haven't realised yet is that their alien technology is going to have a bit of a weird effect on the natural flora and fauna of the island. So, well done, assholes. Bajangles attempted to get her bearings. She spoke to a guy called Megalon, who was like, I have no idea how any of us survived that. I thought you were a goner. Anyway, Proenitus asked me to send you to him, if you woke up. Bajangles head over to Proenitus, and he was like, Oh, thank God, you're awake. I have no idea why the Exodus crashed, but have you noticed how our ships always crash when Velen's flying them? Bit weird, innit? I guess our first concern should be to replenish our depleted healing crystals. The blood of those big moths over there should do it which is convenient. Kill some of them and steal their blood, will you? So our hero killed some big moths and stole their blood. It's sad that our first act on this planet was to kill a bunch of moths, but well, they died so we could live. Circle of life, whatevs. Take those vials to our priest, Zaldun. You'll find him tending to our wounded inside some ship wreckage. I think Botanist Tayrix wants to speak to you as well. Botanist Tayrix did indeed want to speak to Bajangles. The power cores from our ship are irradiated and have been wreaking a little bit of havoc on the environment. And by a little bit of havoc, I mean a lot. There's weird creatures popping up all over the place. We may be able to figure out a way to help them, but for now, there's just too bloody many of them, so you're going to need to kill eight of the twats. And inside the ship wreckage, Priest Zaldun was grateful for the vials of moth blood. Thanks for replenishing the healing crystals. My job's just become a lot easier. But there's something else you could do for me. Us Draenei are blessed with a racial ability called Gift of the Naru. It's a little bit of heals. Go outside and use it on one of the survivors lying around on the ground, and I'll give you a bag that has space for four things in it. Bajangles quickly did that and got herself a fancy new bag. Then she went and killed some of the weird volatile mutations messing about in the Vale. She returned to Tayrix, who now wanted help with another matter. So, we've contaminated the lake. This is starting to get a little bit embarrassing. I have a theory, but I need some samples of the lashes at Ammon Fields. One of her apprentices, Vishal, also had a favour to ask. Couldn't help but overhear that you're headed to Ammon Fields. My master's a little bit stressed out, so I didn't want to worry her. But if you could grab me some samples of corrupted flowers from there as well, that would be great. I don't want to go into too much detail, but I think we may have caused the local Lasher population's dicks to fall off. So our hero head west to Ammon Fields, 
She collected some corrupted flowers off the ground and killed some mutated lashes for samples of those buggers as well. She returned to the botanist and her apprentice and handed those quests in. Okay, I've figured out a neutralizing agent in order to clean the lake. Head south, swim to the center and scatter this powder around the big crystal. You should be fine. I can't think of any reason why swimming in an irradiated lake would be a bad idea. Bajangles went for a little swim, deployed the neutralizing agent and all was right in the world, apart from the terminal illness that Bajangles possibly now had. You've completed like two whole quest lines already, Bajangles. Well done. You should go speak to Vindicator Aldar on the other side of the ship. See ya. Vindicator Aldar was indeed on the other side of the ship. There seems to be some more creatures in the area that have gone weird thanks to the ship crashing. Take some of these crystals and use them on the Owlkins. That should make them calm down a bit. Also, a lady called Technician Zanar appeared out of nowhere. If you're headed to Nestlewood Thicket, keep an eye out for some spare parts. I'm building a device that'll help us establish whether there are other survivors outside of this veil. Bajangles travelled southeast and found a whole bunch of Owlkin. The crystals worked on some of them, but others were just too far gone, so she put them out of their misery by murdering them. She also found a whole bunch of spare parts for Zanar's device thingamajig. Once all that was done, she head back to get herself some XP and hand the quests in. Bloody brilliant, Bajangles, but there's a lot more to be done. We had a number of reports of strange activity up on the Shadow Ridge, but what's a little bit more worrying is that one of my scouts hasn't reported back. Can you go and find Talan and see what's taken him so long? Our hero head towards the Shadow Ridge and soon discovered Talan. He wasn't doing so good. I got ambushed. Ugh. By a bunch of blood elves. Ugh. You gotta find them and kill them. Ugh. Bajangles didn't have to travel very far to find the blood elves. She decided to murder ten of them because that seemed like a decent amount. Thanks for that. I feel better already. You should probably kill their leader though. Surveyor can dress. Without her, the rest of them will probably run away and cry or something. After finding and killing the blood elf surveyor, our hero discovered some blood elf plans. They seemed important, and they were a little bit mysterious. Who was this S person, and why were they so interested in this island? She decided Vindicator Aldar would probably want to see this, so she advised Talan that Surveyor Candress was dead, and then head back to the crash site. The news startled Vindicator Aldar a little bit, and he managed to extract a lot more information from the plans than they actually contained. Those blood elves followed us here. I wish they all died. Actually, sorry, that was a bit harsh. Thanks for uncovering this info. Anyway, whilst you were off, Zanar made some progress with that device thingamajig she was building. You should talk to her. Zanar seemed pretty excited and turned the device on. A hologram of some bloke called Technician Devoon appeared and was like, Well, dip me in shit and roll me in breadcrumbs. I was worried no one else had survived. He then went on to inform them that his group was in Azor Watch. Or at least that sounded like what he was saying. The connection was a bit crap and he got cut off. Well, that was good, wasn't it? You should go to this Azor Watch place and check in with them. You're done in this little starting area bit, Bajangles. Congratulations. So Bajangles left Ammon Vale. On the way to Azor Watch, a guy called Aun was like, Hey, a bunch of beasts jumped me and injured my leg. I was sent on a scouting mission from Azor Watch. Oh, okay, good. For a second, I thought you were going to ask me to deliver something to an innkeeper. Go on. Um, well, I need you to deliver my report back to Azor Watch to a lady called Caregiver Chellen. She's the, um, innkeeper there. Oh, for fuck's sake. Also on the way to Ezra Watch, Bajangles came across a lady called Dick Tinner. She was sitting by the river looking a bit sad. There's red snapper in this river. A very, very tasty fish. With a net, I can catch shitloads of them. But I was attacked by some little assholes called murlocs. And now I'm too injured to fish. So you do it. So our hero did a little bit of fishing. She caught a whole bunch of red snapper, but also came across a few murlocs, which she killed pretty easily. And she laughed to herself over the stupid noise that they made. <laughs> As a reward, Dick Tinner gave Bajangles a fishing rod, and then another quest. Since you're headed to Azul Watch, can you take this crate of Red Snapper with you? Give it to a guy called Acteon. See ya. Our hero finally arrived at Azul Watch and was pleasantly surprised to see that there wasn't an overwhelming amount of quests available. Maybe this video won't take so long. When she gave Acteon the crate of fish, he started going on about some great moon graze hunt. You're starting to make a name for yourself, Bajangles. Ever tried hunting? There's a beast in the area that's called Moongray's Stag, and they kind of look just like Talbucks from Dranor. If you think you're hard enough, go kill a bunch of them. Another person called Anchorite Fatima appeared and was like, The flora around here seemed to hold some medicinal properties, which is kind of handy. Go kill some lashes or something. Killing stags and flowers seemed easy enough, so our hero went out and did that. At one point, she was attacked by an infected Night Stalker runt. When it died, she noticed it dropped a faintly glowing crystal. Perhaps someone back at Azor Watch might be interested in this. And someone was. Exarch Menelaus. Exarch Menelaus approached Bajangles and was like, That crystal you found is a piece of our crashed ship. We've really kind of fudged up the entire ecosystem of this area, haven't we? Fatima immediately created an ointment out of the lasher vines Bajangle collected from the flowers. 
and tried to use it on a wounded knight elf priestess that was laying on the ground. Didn't really work though. Someone else called Daedal appeared and said, she's too far gone for ointments. But there may be another way. There's a plant in the forest called the Azor Snapdragon. Apparently it's amazing and cures everything. So go get some. When Bajangles returned with some bulbs of Snapdragon, Daedal attempted to use it on the wounded night elf. And this time it kind of worked. As the night elf came to, she was like, where am I? What's, what's going on? Oh shit balls, Herodar, get away from me you cursed demon twats. And then she fell into a coma. Well that didn't go as planned. How does this creature know of the Minari? Do you think they all view us as demons? Felon said something about this, but I had no idea what he was talking about. Our allies will find us, he said, and they'll ask us to pay for the sins of our fathers. Okay, here's the plan. We found this night elf south of here. I want you to go there, find the rest of her people, and tell them that we're not the bad guys. The area that Bajangles was looking for was called Odysseus's Landing. She found it eventually and spoke to a bunch of weird, ugly looking aliens. Admiral Odysseus was up first, since he appeared to be in charge. You say you've found one of our crew and she's injured? That's terrible. I'll send someone to your camp right away. He then kind of looked Pajangles up and down and decided he'd give a request or two. I'm an admiral of the Alliance Naval Command. Unfortunately, and this is a little bit embarrassing, some goblins stowed away on my ships and stole my navigation gear whilst I was asleep. They jumped ship and buggered off into the thicket east of here, forcing us to make port on this island. I'd be really grateful if you could go get my compass and map back. And another guy called Cookie McWeeksauce appeared. I'm not making that up, that's his actual name. We've been eating a lot of chicken recently, and everyone's sick of it. Mind getting me some crawler meat? I see a load of them walking around by the coast. Yar! He's a, he's a pirate, by the way. Probably should have established that before. Seemed a bit rude that these aliens were now asking our hero to do things, even though she'd barely known them five minutes, but she decided to help out. She went to the beach and killed a bunch of skittering crawlers for their meat, and then made her way east until she found some Venchico goblins hanging about. And she beat the shit out of them until she got the Admiral's compass and map back. She returned to give those things to her new friends and received even more quests. Turned out some of the Venturco's own documents had gotten mixed up with the Admiral's stuff. What's this? These are orders from a mogul Razdunk. Seems they planned to land here all along and mine the island of the crystal wreckage from your ship. But how the balls did they know about it? This can only mean one thing. I've got a traitor in my crew. All right, get yourself a hollowed out tree and some leaves. I've got a plan. Next, Priestess Kyleen Ildenar stepped up and was like, Seems fate has presented an opportunity here, Bajangles. Turns out there's some ruins of an ancient city of my people right here on this island. Unfortunately, it's overrun by Naga. Can you do me a favour and cleanse the ruins of these unwelcome shits? And finally, a dwarf called Archaeologist Adamant Ironheart approached and was like, Go into the old ruins, are you? My pa always used to say, Sonny, whenever you see Night Elf ruins, you'll find Night Elf relics. So go dig up some relics for me and I'll make it worth your while. Bajangles decided she wanted to go back and see how people were doing at Azur Watch first. She made sure to pick up any leaves and stuff she found lying around on the way back. There were a couple of new quests available. Someone called Dolvi was like, bit of a weird request. Our injured guest here was talking in their sleep about a fisherman called Kowlin, who was apparently in some distress. I know it might just be some fevered ramblings, but could you look into it? I'm just a bit worried is all. And the other new quest was from Cryptographer Orin. I've bloody cracked it, Bajangles. Look at this totem. It's covered in symbols and stuff. I think we can use their totems to create a sort of Stilpine Firbolg language primer. Take a look at this. He handed our hero a parchment, and upon studying it, she felt like she had a slightly better understanding of what the symbols on the totem meant. This wasn't just pictures of wolves, bears, owls, and stags carved into the surface. It was letters of an alphabet, and the word on this totem spelled Akida. So our hero did a little weird quest line where she found totems and spoke the words written on them. The next totem she found said Koo on it, and when she said Koo out loud, still Pine Ancestor Koo appeared and was like, a bloopity bloopity blah. Seems our hero still had a bit more to learn before she would understand the Firbold language. But the Ancestor appeared to be pointing her in the direction of another totem. The next totem had the word Tikti written on it. And again, a still Pine Ancestor appeared, presumably called Tikti. Gaze upon the bloopity bloopity. She was beginning to understand these weird creatures, but not fully. The next totem was called Yor, and you can kind of guess what happened. Ancestor Yor appeared, but this time, it didn't speak complete nonsense. Follow me, Bloopity. Follow me to the next Bloopity Totem, you bitch. The final totem belonged to an ancestor called Vark, and he was like, hey, how's it going? The Stilpine Firbolgs were at war with another tribe, the Bristle Limbs. Those jerks did horrible things to us, but we always had hope, for we had a prophecy that one day a hero, one that's not of Firbolg blood, would save us. And maybe that's you or something, I don't know. Our hero decided it was definitely her, and decided she'd help these Firbolgs. She went to the Bristle Limb village and killed a whole bunch of them. 
and then used their keys to free as many Stilpine captives as she could, before she got bored. Bajangles became a legend amongst Furbolgs that day, and she learned their language too. I told you the quest line was weird. After that, she head to the old Night Elf ruins. She killed a bunch of Naga, one of which dropped a rune-covered tablet, and she collected some relics she found lying around on the ground. The Dwarf Guide was grateful for the relics and also deciphered the markings on the tablet. Oh dear, apparently there's a warlord called Srizztiz who wants to take the rest of this island by force, and he's got a load of reinforcements coming from Nazjatar. Everybody involved felt like that wasn't great news and that this warlord should probably be killed. So our hero head into a cave called Tides Hollow and killed the knob. Admiral Odysseus then used the tree and leaves to create a disguise for our hero. Head over to that cove over there and hide. We'll catch this traitor in the act. She head over to Traitor's Cove. Side note, bit of a bloody coincidence that we're going to catch a traitor in an area called Traitor's Cove, innit? She put on the greatest disguise you've ever seen and did a stakeout. And soon enough, a Venture Co. Goblin called Giesel appeared. And also some guy we've never seen before, which is a little bit disappointing. Engineer Spark Overgrime was the traitor. What a twist! Spark was a little bit pissed off that the Admiral now knew there was a traitor in his midst. But that wasn't the worst of it. He was also loyal to Kelthas Sunstrider, and their main objective on this island was to assassinate Velen. You'd think our hero would be in a massive rush to make sure that wasn't going to happen, but next she came across the missing fisherman, Kowlan. He was a little bit upset because him and his family had lived on this island for many years in peace, but things recently took a pretty dark turn. The Albies just randomly attacked us. I fought tooth and nail, but they knocked me out. When I came to, my family were gone, and the sand was soaked red with their blood. So I'm pretty sure the Owl Beasts ate my family. I don't give a crap about vengeance, I just want their remains so I can give them a proper burial. The Owl Beasts were nearby so Bajangles went and killed them and grabbed Kowlan's family's remains. However, whilst exploring the other side of the isle, Bajangles stumbled upon a young girl called Magwin. My family were attacked by Owl Beasts. I ran away but I think my mother and father are dead. I don't know what to do, but I know I want to go back to my home, or what's left of it. Can you escort me back? When Bajangles and Magwin arrived back at Cowlan's house, the old fisherman cried his bloody eyes out. I mean, his wife was definitely still dead, but at least he'd been reunited with his daughter, so that's nice. It was now time to continue the Prophecy of Velen questline. Bajangles returned to Odysseus, and he now wanted her to locate and kill Spark, the gnome traitor. It's time to put an end to this, Bajangles. So she head down to the beach and confronted the little bastard. When he died, he dropped a letter that had been sent from Kelthas himself. In it, he basically just bitched and moaned about how the Draenei had stolen his ship, but the surveyor that our hero killed bloody ages ago had managed to transmit the Exodile's location before she died. And whoever this mysterious S person is, they're still out there, planning some kind of assault on the Draenei. You might want to take that info to your own people, Bajangles. Your actions today may have delayed Kelthas' plans, but I have a feeling it's not over yet. Returning to Azor Watch, our hero informed Exarch Melanaus of what had happened. You're a true hero, Bajangles. I think it's time for you to join the Hand of Argus. Go report to Turalius the Pack Handler outside the Exodar and he'll tell you what to do next. But before that, a Furbolg within Azur Watch wanted Bajangles to do some stuff. Hey Chosen One, do me a favour and go talk to our chief near Stillpine Hold. The Furbolg chief was called High Chief Stillpine, obviously. He wanted our hero to search Stillpine Hold for clues as to why they were attacked by Wildkin. And another guy, Stillpine the Younger, was like, can you also kill a bunch of Wildkin and their leader, Chieftain Umaru? That'd be great, because we'd all quite like to go home. So our hero entered Stillpine Hold and fought her way through the Wildkin and their leader. She discovered a blood crystal. This must be what's causing the corruption here. Back outside, she told the High Chief of her findings, only to be told to go back inside the cave again. The Wildkin brought a beast with them, which laid waste to our village. The Kirkin. I believe the Kirkin is lurking inside the cave. <laughs> go kill the Kirkin, because it's a jerkin. So she murdered the Kirkin. And the Stilpine Firbolgs rejoiced as their home was now safe for them to return. The prophecy is true. You really are the Chosen One. But that blood crystal you discovered, it's a fragment of your ship. But it's been altered. I fear there may be more of these corrupting other areas. You should probably warn your people. So she let Exarch Melanaus know of this as well. And that was it. When she spoke to Turalius outside the Exodar, he informed her that she should travel to Bloodmist Isle next to continue her adventure. The area had been ravaged by radiation from their ship, and everything had turned red. Creatures had turned hostile, and it was up to the Draenei to undo the damage they'd caused. And we're leaving it there! I tried really hard to make that, like, flow smoothly, but it was all over the place. Next week, we'll try and do the Blood Elves starting zones, Sunstrider Isle and Eversong Woods. If you enjoyed this video, like, subscribe, all of that bollocks. And all that's left to say is, thanks for watching, and see ya!